Hi, I'm Dr. Marla Shapiro. I'm the past president of the North American Menopause Society, joined by Dr. Andrew Connitz, who also is um, a former member of the Board of Trustees of the North American Menopause Society. He is well known to menopausal women and menopausal practitioner. He's a professor and associate chair in the Department of Obstetrics and Gynecology at the University of Florida College of Medicine in Jacksonville. And it's a pleasure that he joins me today. Thank you so much for being with me, Andy. Uh, um, I'm looking forward to it, Marla. Thanks, thanks for inviting me. So um, I am going to be the patient for you and I'm going to be in your office. And um, my story is, is that I'm sort of in my late forties and I'm um, um, just sort of, you know, approaching menopause. And um, I sort of think that it's impossible for me to get pregnant at this stage. So I'm really not interested or worried about pregnancy. Should I be? Um, so the simple answer would be, uh, in general, the answer is yes, um, you, you still should be concerned. Um, the likelihood that with any act of, of uh, sexual intercourse, uh, that a 48-year-old woman who's now starting to experience irregular periods because she's entering that, that what we call perimenopause time, um, the likelihood that a perimenopausal woman will conceive is less than a much younger woman, let's say a 28-year-old woman. But um, until menopause has occurred, that is until the last period was one year ago or longer, um, until then, women are still um, ovulating, maybe less frequently than when they were younger, but they're still ovulating. And women who ovulate can conceive. And um, most of my perimenopausal patients um, uh, don't want to be pregnant and would find that very unwelcome. Quite a few of my patients in their late 40s um, have medical issues that would complicate pregnancy, like high blood pressure, for instance. Um, um, and so um, contraception remains important. And I, I'm glad you're bringing this issue up for those that are watching this video. Okay, so let's say I am on the birth control pill. And I think, gee, it's been forever that I've been on the birth control pill. Isn't there some way that you can tell me if I can like stop it safely? Isn't there a way to do a blood test or something that's gonna say it's okay to stop? So um, uh, when I, I, I have a number of slender, healthy women in their late 40s and even, yes, even in their early 50s who continue to be on oral contraceptives. They have a little bit of withdrawal bleeding each month or perhaps no bleeding at all, which is perfectly normal and healthy and long-term users of hormonal contraception like the pill. Um, um, they're not experiencing the hot flashes that their neighbor of the same age might be experiencing along with their regular periods um, because the, the pill prevents irregular bleeding and it prevents hot flashes. Um, uh, often um, women, uh, patients like this will be asked by their girlfriend or maybe their hairdresser, what, you're still on the pill and you're 48 or 50? You know, maybe you need to find a new gynecologist. Uh, or maybe you need to, as your question applied, get your get your blood checked and, and check an FSH level. Um, check my hormones. Can't you check my hormones? Yes, yeah, that's, that's right. So um, in fact, um, checking hormones is actually not useful in this setting. Um, what, what is important is to is to see, is this patient, are you continuing to be an appropriate, safe candidate for the pill, let's say? And if you are a uh, slender um, you know, normal weight, non-smoking, um, a woman without medical problems, let's say like hypertension or cholesterol problems or diabetes, and um, then in fact, you are a safe and appropriate candidate for staying on the pill, believe it or not, without any hormone level checks until your mid fifties. And then um, once you're, for instance, 55, at that point, women can stop the pill without concern of getting becoming pregnant because the likelihood of ovulation becomes very remote, very unlikely in a 55-year-old. Some 55-year-old patients in my practice will choose to seamlessly transition from contraception to hormone therapy, to, for instance, to prevent hot flashes and to maintain bone mass and prevent osteoporosis. Other women will say, I don't need birth control anymore. Let's see how I feel off hormones and stop the pill 
and then go from there. Um, and one last or one other issue relevant to older reproductive age women who stay on hormonal contraception like the pill is that women who are on the pill today dramatically, Marla, reduce their risk of ovarian and uterine cancer in the future, even decades later. So there are, there are some important health benefits. Also, women who are on the pill in their 40s reduce their risk of hip fracture when they're older in their 60s or 70s. So those are some important, what we call non-contraceptive benefits. And particularly the bone loss, because a fracture can change your life and even put you at risk for death. Okay, yes. so one last question before I let you go. Some of my girlfriends have a special kind of IUD um, that they were given for contraception, but now they still have that IUD and they're beginning to get hot flashes. Should they take the IUD out and get on some type of other hormone treatment? What are women to do? And, and what type of IUD is this? Okay, so you know there are two basic types of IUD. There are the non-hormone IUD, and in the U.S. and Canada, non-hormone IUD means copper IUD. Um, and then there are progestin or hormone-releasing IUDs. And there, um, um, some women may know know the progestin IUDs through names like uh, Morena or Liletta or Skyla or Kylina. But let's say a woman has. Um, uh, a Morena or a Liletta IUD in place, and she's in her late 40s. Um, um, she, the, the, because of the IUD, she doesn't experience bleeding, and, and she's um, content with that. Uh, she doesn't. I, I have yet to meet the 48-year-old the woman who wants to bleed each month. Um, uh, and um, if hot flashes start occurring, keep the IUD, but then add estrogen, which will. Um, which will effectively treat the hot flashes. And women can continue with the combination of the uh, progestin or hormone releasing IUD. And then when hot flashes occur using estrogen, um, they can continue like that for a good number of years. It may, able, may be able to keep that IUD in even longer than the five years that we usually recommend for contraception because we, we recognize that the IUD continues to release good amounts of progestin for more than five years. So I'm very glad you brought that up because I, ha I do have a, a small number of patients in my practice who are cruising through the, the transition from, a month, from monthly cycles to menopause by using the combination of the IUD, the hormone IUD plus estrogen. Well, I think so much information for women to know that that you know, the concept of your periods beginning to change means that you must not forget about contraception if that's an issue for you. And so many options to think about. And I like the idea of cruising into menopause as opposed to finding it a little bit more catastrophic for some. Thank you so much for joining us and sharing all this important information with us. Thank you, Marla. Take care.